Hey guys, my name is Ryan and welcome to HitScan. In this video, I wanted to talk about 2019 and looking into 2020. It will be the last video that I make this year and this decade. So I wanted to make sure that we really look back on 2019 and what could be better for 2020. It's fair to say that 2019 has probably been the worst year for Overwatch so far. A lot of Overwatch content creators have either stopped or really dipped out on a lot of content, putting out half as many videos as they used to, and that's because the game is just really suffering from neglect at this point. There's a really good reason as to why Overwatch 2 is being worked on by Blizzard. They're putting a lot of love and attention in this game, but it's fair to say that the instant gratification of Overwatch is very much suffering as we're just waiting for new content. It's not all doom and gloom. I think 2019 has brought some really important and overall good things for the game, changes to events and how they want to do that. And of course, major areas like Rolllock. But like I said, other areas have suffered. Heroes, maps, communication, patches are all areas that I do want to talk about in this video. Breaking it down into six major areas in no particular order that I want to go through that need to be better for 2020. But I did want to start talking about events. I don't mean the Year of the Dragon kind of thing, the archives events, summer games. Those were pretty much the same in 2019. But much like a lot of other major areas within Overwatch, I don't think it's that big a deal that it stayed relatively the same. Especially with Blizzard basically saying, yeah, we're neglecting these parts of Overwatch so we can focus purely on Overwatch 2, especially PvE related stuff. The events that I want to talk about that are actually being really good are the trio of events that have happened this year surrounding Anna, Baptiste and Mercy that include a bit of lore and story, as well as an exclusive skin that you can get from playing the game during that time. Streaming drops, all that good stuff. Everything that Blizzard has learned what works around an event in game, they focused on and I think they've done a really good job, especially with the inclusion of short stories that gives us a little bit more information about the character. Characters. The pinnacle of this, I think, has been the Baptiste story. It gave us a lot of background on a very interesting character that is very compelled with what he wants to do with his life, how he's connected to Talon, and how being part of Talon previously affects him now. But it also gave us content creators a lot to theorise around. Introducing a new character, Morga, who I can't actually wait to get in game because even for a short story, his personality shone through and he just seems like a really cool character that would benefit the game. But when you compare Baptiste's story to, say, Mercy's, there is a big jump in why it's interesting and what the Mercy story got wrong. And it all has to do with going into Overwatch 2. Each of the future events and stories, because no doubt there's going to be more, should centre on where these characters will go moving forward. What side of the action they're going to be on? Are they going to join new Overwatch or not? What they're going to be doing in that time? Unlike the Mercy story, where we knew that Mercy was going to be part of Overwatch because of the Overwatch 2 cinematic, it didn't tell us anything new, other than the reaction, I suppose, of Soldier and Anna on whether they would join new Overwatch with Winston. And it was kind of almost anticlimactic in that fashion. The point is, is that the Baptiste story took us somewhere, the Mercy one didn't. And I think that's a big area that they could definitely focus on. But another area that I think they could definitely improve on in this fashion is to add bundle events. So what I mean by that is multiple heroes that are in a story, each of them getting their own skin. Let's say, for example, there is a short story on Roadhog and Junkrat that come across another character, I don't know, Symmetra maybe, just out on their missions, they have to work together. They're sort of put in this situation, much like the MCU does a lot where multiple heroes come together in a really interesting fashion, that you end up getting like Thor Ragnarok with Thor and Hulk meeting up in a random place. But like I said, said Roadhog, Junkrat and Symmetra for example each having skins of uniforms that they have to wear. Vishka skins maybe that Roadhog and Junkrat have to awkwardly fit into because they're doing a dirty job for Symmetra and Vishka Corporation. Something like that would be really cool. I think we've seen enough standalone stories of what the heroes of Overwatch are doing at the moment. With Overwatch 2 coming, I'd love to see all 30 odd heroes come together in some capacity instead of just telling all of these fairly boring standalone stories, if that makes sense. And making events around these I think would be a really cool thing to add too. The second area is probably the biggest area of contention at Overwatch I think has got wrong the most this year, and that's just communication. We have had less developer updates this year than any other so far, and thinking about sort of highlights of what Blizzard have put out in the past and what I really appreciated was something that Joshua No posted on the forums quite a few months ago now, talking about balance after the addition of Rolllock, talking about the meta and how it's perceived. It was really interesting to hear what somebody from Blizzard thought about the whole situation to just give us some context on why they do what they do. The worst thing that Blizzard could do when they make very interesting balance changes is to just put like a paragraph 
of developer comments and really not go over there. For example, if there's a particular reason why they haven't nerfed me at this point, I would love to hear it. Instead of the community sort of waiting for them to do something and if Blizzard don't, they're seen as incompetent, Blizzard can get ahead of that and say, we're not going to do this because X, Y, and Z. And a lot of it might be backed by their own stats that they have. So we can go, oh yeah, that makes sense. I can totally understand why that's the case. For somebody to come along and go, hey, we hear you, we're working on it, would be so nice and much nicer than hearing nothing at all. Developer updates talking about community talking points like they had in the past. What they're thinking about with Arisa at the moment. Are they happy with the state of her? Are they not? May, Rolock. Diamond Tank's been put into top 500 games. It would be nice to just hear their perspective on stuff and going, yes, we hear you, we're working on it. We're going to have a patch going over some of this stuff very soon. And this has to improve, certainly going into Overwatch 2, whether that's in 2020 or 2021. The communication part is going to kill Overwatch if they're not careful. It goes on to patches, but I feel like I've said everything that I wanted to in regards to communication and on important heroes such as me and the reset at the moment. I think the balance of the game this year has actually been really good. There have been some really awkward positions that the game has been in, but I really like the last two big balance patches that we've had ever since Rollock was added into the game. I think the game overall is balanced in a much different way than people give it credit for. There's still, like I said, some difficult heroes in the game that are far too strong or not strong enough. But when you have 30 different heroes that all provide different things and counter different heroes on different maps, yada yada, the game is in a fairly good spot with who you can play and how you can play them. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that the game is awfully balanced Balanced and Blizzard don't know what they're doing. I think that's dismissive and sort of close-minded almost. The rate the patches go out can be improved and especially with hearing Blizzard say and speaking to them directly of them being like yeah we're a couple of months ahead in our own internal tests with new heroes on their own personal PTR I guess it would be and different balance changes. I think they can certainly speed that up. Not because balance in the game needs to be adjusted much faster because the game's balance is bad, but just to keep something interesting. Instead of relying on new content, being via new maps and heroes and all that jazz, it would be nice to see the meta changed up for the sake of it. I know some people don't really like that, and I understand why Blizzard don't do that. They aren't just going to make Mercy super strong for the sake of it because we know what happened last time. The best time for us to make Overwatch content is after a patch because everything's up in the air, we can get different perspectives off different pros and streamers that play certain heroes that were buffed and nerfed. That gives us good indication on where the game's going and to understand what the hell is going on. At times like this, when stuff's settled and people know what's quite good, it's very difficult to talk about the meta without beating a dead horse, as you guys already know. They don't have to be massive patches like the last two have been, just enough to keep us interested and to just change up heroes as they go along. That's my perspective on it at least, maybe Misk would think something completely different, but it's hard to be invested in a meta that's quite stagnant and has been for quite some time. That whilst I don't think micro patches in any extent would completely alleviate or fix that, I feel like it's a lot better for Blizzard to adjust stuff on the go than it is to wait and see for a couple of months before they start changing up stuff drastically. Like the Baptiste change still doesn't make much sense when you think about it. But there are two major areas, communication and patches. But certainly looking at two other sectors that I really wanted to highlight here as a maps, things aren't as bad as they seem. When we heard that there was only going to be one hero potentially between now and Overwatch 2, it seemed like a really bad thing like a really really bad thing but as time has gone on since blizzcon i'm sort of less fussed about it now don't get me wrong the new addition of a hero is the best thing for us content creators it's a big news beat that gets a lot of people interested even if they don't play overwatch anymore because they want to see what's new who this character is how they sound what their abilities are all that jazz but with everything that we said about communication and patches, having a new hero isn't necessary for Overwatch to have a big year. Especially if Blizzard are a little bit more consistent with how they put out patches and news and communication. We don't need to have a new hero because we have plenty of heroes in the game already. And we've had so many strong heroes come in recently that I don't know if I'd necessarily want a new hero to come in and change everything. Baptiste didn't start off very good but was very strong. Sigma came in and took over everything and changed up the meta quite drastically to the point I think if Rollock was added into the game without Sigma, we may be in a better place overall. Especially with the health of tanks as a whole. That's not necessarily Sigma's fault alone but his introduction with Orisa has just made things very obnoxious especially when it came to double barriers it's either a new hero doesn't provide enough or they provide too much very rarely does a new hero come into the game and has a very balanced perspective 
Ash has suffered ever since her addition of the game. Wrecking Ball, again, whilst he has popularity in some areas, hasn't really shown. Brigitte, you know the story. I used to think it was a big deal that we might not get many heroes or just one hero in 2020, which is probably likely. I don't think it's that big of a deal, but Blizzard really needs to be on point with their balance before and after then. But Blizzard doesn't fix their current situation by adding more and more heroes into the game. Not right now, at least, I don't think. For Overwatch 2, yep, it's going to be crazy. The addition of six heroes or whatever it's going to be all at once is going to be a lot of fun. But until then, it's going to be rough. Maps is a similar thing. I actually don't think we need any more maps into the game at the moment. This goes on nicely to the whole push game mode that was introduced in Overwatch 2. I would like to see this in Overwatch 1 first, but I think we're going to have to wait. I think it's a really cool competitive game mode that the sooner we get to play it, the better. But I would love to see no new addition to maps, honestly. I just love to see those maps reworked, even the ones that aren't contentious and controversial such as Paris or Horizon Lunar Colony. It would be nice to see some of the maps changed in some capacity. Just to keep things interesting, especially if they're not in a competitive map pool, just stuff like, I don't know, we changed Blizzard World a little bit. We added in this new extra bit. We wanted to change this area because it was too defensively favoured, just to keep stuff interesting with a map pool that we already have. We haven't had a new map since Paris, which was early 2019, and I don't really miss it. I don't really need a new map to scratch any itch. I'd rather them just focus purely on the PvE areas of Overwatch 2, if I'm being honest. Nobody wants a new map. And much like a hero, I don't think it's necessary for Overwatch to have a good year. Overwatch 2 is going to be the biggest thing about 2020 for Blizzard. Whilst it's unlikely that Overwatch 2 comes out this year, it might start something like a beta. Overwatch was announced at BlizzCon 2014. About a year later, Overwatch Central started up and we got into the closed beta. So I would like to see, sort of towards the end of this year, some closed or open beta to try out the game for the majority of people. A lot of you guys didn't get to play it because you weren't at BlizzCon. It would be nice to see something open up to allow players to try it out and most importantly give their feedback. On that subject, I would love to give my own feedback to Blizzard about stuff like this. Having been a content creator covering Anthem, Borderlands 3, and played a good amount of Destiny myself, PvE is such an important aspect that a lot of people get wrong, that I think I could give some good feedback to Blizzard, and no doubt you guys can as well. I've seen a lot of you play a good amount of Destiny. I think it would be good for Blizzard to listen and not screw up in the same areas the Destiny, Borderlands, and especially Anthem, Division, those games really suffered from. And I think that the PvE side of Overwatch 2 can be really good. But I think this needs to be a journey that goes along with the fans instead of trying to surprise them like Blizzard likes to do. Classic was really successful for World of Warcraft because they worked alongside the community, listened to feedback and worked on it, and made a great game alongside the community. Blizzard try and surprise us too much by withholding a lot of information. I can see that backfiring. But if it wasn't for Overwatch 2, this would be a really dark time for Overwatch as a whole, as you can probably imagine. But how Blizzard communicates with Overwatch 2, introducing new information as they go along, I think would be really nice. Even developer updates of like, hey, this is what we're focusing on on Overwatch 2. Wanted to show you some gameplay of the new PvE features that we've added. We've upgraded the talent system it gives us content creators a lot to talk about and discuss but it also just means that Blizzard are very much open with what they're doing and the feedback that they want. We saw a good amount of that from Diablo 4 already with the community saying hey I noticed this I would recommend that you go against it yada yada and you get some nice to and fro and this year 2019 has been awful when it comes to to and fro between us and Blizzard. It's been frankly unacceptable I feel but with any luck going forward into a new chapter for Blizzard and Activision Blizzard and just everybody as a whole, we go into a nice golden age of Overwatch again. 2019 sounds very doom and gloom, but honestly, I think for both myself and Miska, it's been really good. We've been able to do some amazing opportunities, and I did want to shout out at the end of this video, Omen, end of a year, end of a decade. Uh, this year has been great. We've been able to do some awesome stuff with them. We went to Gamescom. We went to the Overwatch League Grand Finals to do some interviews as well as BlizzCon. We even casted some stuff on stage at EGX in the UK and we've been able to make some awesome esports Overwatch League related content with them and I can't wait to do more into 2020, especially when the Overwatch League starts moving around. We haven't even really spoken about that, but they have been super awesome to work with. As I'm recording this, I am back in Yorkshire again for Christmas, traveling home just before New Year, but I wouldn't be able to work without this on my laptop and all that stuff. So yeah, very much wanted to shout them out. Big love, and that's everything I wanted to talk about today. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you have a very safe and healthy New Year. Hope you get all of the goals that you want in 2020. Until I've watched two, maybe Project A, I sleep. Thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you next time. Happy New Year.